All right. In this video, we are going to discuss how we can actually work with branches in Git. So we have been working with uh, the main branch straight away in Git. Uh, and we saw how we could able to check in the code within our local repository all these days and also how we can push that in the remote branch or remote repository and how we can work with the remote repositories code using the main branch how we can commit a code push that particular code changes and stuff we also saw git logs uh, and also we saw how we could able to uh, how we could able to see all those configurations and stuff and now we are going to work with what is called as branches so if we just type this git branch at the moment it will tell you that we are in the main branch which is cool but this is not what the case is going to be in, in in reality because while we directly push anything on the main branch it's going to be a nightmare because everybody is working on the is going to work on the main branch and if everybody is going to keep changing or committing anything on the main branch then it's going to be disaster so we all need to work within our own branches if you're going to make any change for example in this particular case let's say in the cypress code that we have let's say our tester has uh, thought to make some changes on one of the uh, fixture it has got for example on this particular fixture uh, this test data i say is using fixture to represent data and there is a email saying hello at cypress.com instead of that he is going to use his own email id like cartmcat at gmail.com and he's going to save this particular code so once he modifies that we know that the git status if you just see that it is going to there is going to be a file which is in the modified state but if he's going to again work on the same main branch then it's going to be a problem because uh, this main maybe his change is going to be his own email address but he cannot directly push this change to the main branch because everybody's going to work and if everybody's going to use his email address it's going to be a problematic thing as well it shouldn't be the case so how to work in this kind of situation before he check in the code he shouldn't be either checking this particular file change and he should be working on a separate branch to develop all the test and then check in only the changes that he is intending to rather checking in all the files as well so this is the very very usual uh, scenario which which happens to come while working with git itself all right so how to do that so in order to do that the first thing which we're going to do is we are going to create a branch checkout so for that i'm just going to do git checkout hyphen b for the branch and then i'm going to give a name something like feature uh, modification and hit enter so once i do that you will see that the branch from the main branch has been now switched to this feature modification branch and still this exclamation of one which means there's a one file uncommitted is still there the modification is still going on with this particular branch which is pretty cool so now if i just do a git status you will still see this particular file which is in the modified state coming up for us and now if i go to the visual studio you will see in visual studio code even over here uh, it will tell me that this is a feature modification branch instead of the main branch that we have been looking so but the number or the commit num the branch commits number are still the same d134 uh, f b a a and this is also the same because there is no change at all so far we have not made any changes it's still the exact replica of what it is so now if i just do a git branch over here you will see that it is in the feature branch and it's the main branch over here so now our tester has decided to make all the changes he has found okay the body um this is no body just gonna make this change and then uh, he's gonna go to the first test and he thinks that uh, there is going to be an it which you don't really care about so he's just going to delete all these things he's just going to make changes uh, like that and he sees some unnecessary spaces there he's going to do that and then he's going to format the document so he's he has made that which is all good and now he's going to come back to his code uh, once again he's going to make the check-in right now so he's going to go to the git status you will see that there is going to be two changes he has made one is on the example.json file one is on the first.ts file. So he wants to uh, see all the changes he really wanted to, uh, he really made so far. Let's say he he is he want to see that from the command line instead of going to the Visual Studio code. 
So in order to do that, he can just do the git log of stat. So if he do that, he will see all the changes coming up over here. Or maybe what he can do is there is a command called as git. Uh, I think it's patch. So if I just do a git log of patch like that, you can see what is the change which has been uh, which has been made on that particular file. So within this particular git on the cypress.json file, there are two uh, files like a cypress.json file, b cypress.json file. So there is doing uh, there is actually a git diff happening. And over here, it also tells you the difference of what has been changed. So from the experiment, uh, 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 it was true. So it has been changed to the false like that. And there is another file change which has happened, which is the example.json file uh, over here. And there is a action spec.json file. There is this particular change which has happened. So you can see all the changes which has been happened is all uh, coming up over here. So let me just quit that probably. And now we have seen how to work with the stats and uh, patches. We can also see what is called as a log of one line, something like that, where it will show you exactly things in just like one line, like what has really happened in that particular branch changes and stuff. All right. So we have seen enough on the particular git stat changes and stuff which we are making on that particular code over here. But I'm actually going to focus on how this developer or the tester is going to deal with his code changes that he has made. So you can see that there are two files he has made changes. One file was his email address on the example.json file which you don't really need to commit. Uh, rather he's just going to keep that as an untracked file he's going to just check in the first test.ts file. So how to do that? So we're going to do the exact same thing. Cypress, git add Cypress integration of the first test.ts file. He can add that. And then the git rm, so see this is a new command altogether, where we are going to say hyphen catched of the file that I really don't want to track. So Cypress slash fixture slash example dot JSON file. So once I do that, oops, I'm sorry, it should be hyphen hyphen catched. So Git is intelligent enough to tell me that I'm just going crazy. So it has did that for me. And now if I just do a Git status, you will see that there is a file being deleted from modification like the uh, email address and there was another change like the body change which is currently in untracked like u so you can see there is a u state which means it's an untracked state and there is a modification over here like m like nine file nine lines has been modified so it's coming up for us which is cool so this is what it's saying at the moment over here as well so now which is cool. So now there is an untracked file from the fixture and there is this changes coming up, which is all good. And now if I just do a git of commit where I'm going to commit the changes. So I'm just going to say a message saying modified files for tests. Uh, and then he's going to hit enter. Uh, and then this is currently sitting on the feature modification branch, right? So this is the thing that he has been working on his uh, local branch. And now he need to push this code change on the Git. So he's just going to do a Git push. That's it. But he need to set once again, the origin as the feature modification. So it is exactly the same thing, like how we did for the uh, for the origin main branch in our earlier video. So if you see on the git right now, there is only one branch. So even if you try to click all the branches, there is only one branch so far. There is not so many branches like feature modification. It is just sitting within our local machine at the moment. So it has to be somehow sent to the upstream origin as this particular branch name. So this is what we're doing at the moment. So we didn't do that. And once we hit enter, you can see that it has been sent to this particular uh, repo with a branch name as this. 
And now if we just go back and if we try refreshing this particular branch, you will see that it's going to be a new branch feature modification coming up as well. So this particular command, like the one which we did before, git push set upstream origin feature master is going to create a branch for us, which is all good. And now all the changes that I made is actually sitting just within my branch. So if I just go back to my code, uh, within my main, you will still see within the Cypress of the first, or probably not Cypress, this one. Integration, first test.ts file. You will see the XHR testing is still sitting. But if I change the branch to the feature modification, you will see the XHR is not there. So now the tester thinks that, all right, I need to create a pull request and I need to merge my changes to the main branch directly. How to do that? We should be discussing in our next video.